name is Lucia and this is the Green Olive Cooking Channel. Do you ever have those moments where you want something sweet but not too sweet? Or maybe something with your coffee or something quick to go on the run for breakfast? Well in this video I'm going to show you this multi-purpose antique Italian biscotti recipe. And just a quick reminder if you haven't done so already go ahead and hit this button to subscribe to the channel and the like button if you like biscotti. Pronti? Allora andiamo a cucinare. So when you think of biscotti, what comes to mind? Probably those long, hard cookies that are dipped in chocolate. That is what biscotti is in America. But in Italy, biscotti is actually Italian for the word cookie. So it can be any type of cookie. So let's go ahead and look at the ingredients that we need for this recipe. So the ingredients for this recipe will be three eggs, six tablespoons of milk, six tablespoons of vegetable oil, six tablespoons of sugar, the zest of one lemon, three tablespoons of baking powder, and three cups of milk. The first thing we are starting with is three cups of flour in our mixing bowl. We're gonna add our sugar and our baking powder. And we're just gonna mix that just to combine. Great. Now, we're going to take our olive oil, combine our milk, our eggs, and I'm going to give that a quick whisk with my fork, just enough just to break up the eggs. And now I'm going to incorporate that all into my um, dry ingredients. And while that is incorporating, I'm going to get the zest ready for my uh, lemon. And I like to use this rasp, and I like to use it face up so it actually gathers all of the bits of lemon zest. And you want to use a organic lemon so that you can eat the skin and not have to worry about the pesticides. And once you've got all your lemon, just go ahead and tap that all in there. And it's a little bit dry, so at this point what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to squeeze the lemon juice and add that to this as well. Alright, and I'm going to carefully add my lemon juice in here without getting in any seeds. And we can see that little bit of liquid was perfect in making the dough come together as a nice ball. So we're pretty much done at this point. So now that our dough is ready, we're going to um, put a little bit of flour on our working surface and take our dough out. And your dough is going to be just a little bit kind of tacky. And that is perfect, that's exactly what you want. Okay, so I just put a little bit of flour on top and now I'm just gonna just kind of work the dough a little bit until it kind of comes together. And it's gonna be a little bit tacky and that's okay. You don't want it too dry. This is a very moist, tender cookie. And that's about all we want, it's just like that. Now we're gonna roll it out. And I've got my rolling pin with these spacers on so it's even all the way through. And I'm just going to roll this out as best as I can into a square or a rectangle shape. Tacky, just add just a little bit of flour, just enough so that your rolling pin doesn't stick. We don't want too much flour on this. Okay, and it looks like it's about a quarter inch all the way through now. That's exactly what we want. And to cut our dough, I like to use a straight edge just so I make sure that my cookies are straight. And I'll also use a pizza cutter. That kind of helps me stay guided. So I'm roughly eyeballing it about three quarters of an inch wide. Of course, you know, you can make these as wide as you would like. But I like to dip these for coffee, so I like them about three quarters of an inch. Now these cookies are very popular in the region of Abruzzia, which is where my mother came from. And they made these cookies many, many years ago. As a matter of fact, um, when they would make the cookies, they didn't have anywhere to store them. And so a lot of times the cookies would just get stored on a shelf. They really didn't have Ziploc bags like we do nowadays to store things. And um, they would get hard. And so one of the things that they would use for these cookies is they would give it to the babies to, um, to teethe with. Instead of having teethers, they would teethe with this. And the cookies were soft enough that 
they could teeth with it with their gums and they would of course eat the cookie after. The other thing uh, they would do is they would take the dried cookies and put it in a bowl of some warm milk and a little bit of espresso and that was how they had cereal in the morning. So cereal was also uh, made from these cookies. So these cookies were used in many, many ways and I love having them not only for dipping for my coffee but for having them as cereal. Kind of reminds me, you know, growing up. That was how we had them. All right, so now we're gonna cut them about three inches in length. I've got some shorter ones here, so I'm just gonna pull them aside. And I'm gonna work with these longer ones. And so we're just about that wide. And they don't have to all be perfect. That's what's so perfect about these imperfect cookies. I'll cut that in half. I'll cut this one maybe in threes, that one in half, probably that one in half as well. Okay, so now that I've got all my cookies cut up, I'm going to get a cookie sheet and place them on the cookie sheet and get ready to put them in the oven. And now all we need to do is just sprinkle some sugar on top so it has this nice golden crisp crust when, they, when it cooks. All right, and now we're gonna place them in the oven, 350 degrees for 20 minutes. Okay. So as you can see, these cookies have now come out of the oven and we've put them in the cookie jar. They are great with a cup of espresso. Um, you can use them for breakfast as a cereal substitute. Uh, even if you have a baby, babies love these cookies. These are very popular baby cookies. So I hope you enjoy these cookies and you make them over and over again. And you can try different variations by adding orange juice instead of the lemon. Uh, you can add some nuts or raisins to this as well. There's so many things that you can do with this basic cookie recipe. And I'd love to hear the comments below and hear from you as to what biscotti is your favorite cookie. And here's also a couple other videos that I have linked that I think you might be interested in. And if you'd like to learn more about Green Olive, please feel free to visit our website at greenolivecook.us. And there's a button down there to let me know that you care. So go ahead and please hit the like button if you liked my video. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so that you can continue with your journey of learning how to make some authentic Italian dishes with me. Until next time, ciao, a vediamo dopo.